My colleagues, I think it's safe to say that there is broad consensus in this chamber that Bill C-11 requires deep and comprehensive study. The question before us is, what is the best way to carry out that study? This is a very complicated bill, replete with competing interests from a wide and diverse range of stakeholders. This isn't a question of hearing from people on both sides. What we're looking at is not a two-sided debate, but something more like a dodecahedron. The interests of digital-first video creators are not the same as the interests of established conventional filmmakers. The interests of young musicians attempting to use YouTube to break into their field are quite different than the interests of the giant record labels represented by Music Canada. The interests of Netflix, Prime, Apple, and Disney are quite different than the interests of Global or Rogers or Bell. This bill splits across so many cultural divides. C11 reads and feels quite differently whether you're Anglophone or Francophone, rural or urban, northern or southern, whether you come from the west or the center. And there's perhaps an even greater generational divide. People who watch television versus those who Netflix and chill versus those who grew up on Twitch and Discord. The bill fundamentally redefines Canada's entertainment and information ecosystem, and it requires rigorous, nonpartisan, independent, fair-minded review, which the Senate is uniquely equipped to provide. Is C-11 unconstitutional? Some critics have suggested that it is, though I don't think so. Still, there is no doubt it does engage with important constitutional issues. Is the bill about censorship? No, I think that's a complete red herring. But it is an extremely ambitious piece of legislation that attempts a radical paradigm shift in the way we consume online culture. For some, it's problematic and protectionist legislation, which doesn't necessarily fit the way people today consume or create digital media. But whether you support the bill or not, I hope we can all agree that it needs the sober second thought that the Senate at its best provides. It's difficult to provide sober second thought while the first thought is still happening. Committee work in the other place just began a week ago, but it's moving extremely quickly. Unlike the parallel bill C-10, which spent four months in committee, this bill is moving rapidly. And it was initially, C-10 was subjected to an extraordinary number of amendments, 134 amendments in all, some of them seemingly contradictory, amendments that completely rewrote the bill. So I don't think it's unfair or unreasonable for me to be worried about the timing of all of this. It's possible that if we begin our pre-study before the House has finished its work, we could be wasting our time, spinning our wheels, because we will have no idea what the bill that finally comes to us will actually look like. But actually, given the pace at which the committee and the other place is working, it's also possible that a pre-study will be moot and that we'll get the bill so quickly we won't have time for a pre-study to even begin. More than that, I am concerned that if the bill does come to us in mid-June, and I say this with the greatest of respect for the government representative for whom I have the greatest of respect. I'm hearing voices from outside this chamber that suggest to me that we could nonetheless be hurried into winding up a final study before we've had time to do our job properly. I'm even more worried about that as of today because as we begin debate on this motion, because of what's happening with Bill C-18. The government imposed time allocation on C-18. This afternoon it was sent to committee after second reading. I'm more than a little concerned that we could end up with both bills before our committee more or less at once. And C-18, which is a far more radical and problematic bill than C-11, must absolutely not be rushed either. I want to make it plain, I am not interested in dragging my feet or stalling this study for the sake of stalling. I don't have a partisan or ideological game to play. I'm speaking out of common sense. I want to plow ahead. I want to start the study of C-11 as soon as possible. I have been meeting with stakeholders and lobbyists, artists and academics, lawyers and technical experts for two years now. I can't wait to get started on a proper study of C-11. This bill is just as momentous for the industries and the economies it seeks to regulate as C-69 was for the energy sector, and it deserves mature and measured study. I deeply appreciate the thrust of Senator Gold's comments, and I share his frustration at how long it has taken to get this bill to us in the Senate. I am a champion, passionate champion, a lifelong champion of the Canadian arts and Canadian culture. And indeed, as a sometime playwright and author myself, I've been a small part of the cultural economy. But I do want to clear up a few points of confusion. Two weeks ago, the government representative told us this chamber that if Bill C-11 were delayed until fall, quote, hundreds of millions of dollars targeted for allocation to Canadian content and Canadian creators of content would be lost. I wish for my colleagues to understand this. 
There is no way that hundreds of millions of dollars earmarked for the arts sector will be lost if we wait until October to pass this bill. That is because, to be clear, C11 doesn't earmark nor allocate any money for anyone at all. The bill instead allows the CRTC broad new powers to hammer out agreements with various major streaming services and social media platforms, individual financial deals that could take years to work out. Once this bill is passed, there will be no immediate change to funding for Canadian film, television and music. This bill is not a tax bill, it is a regulatory framework. A regulatory framework. It doesn't tax anyone. It doesn't apply any levies, it doesn't create any new production funds, and it doesn't transfer nor allocate a single penny to anyone. It punts the issue down the field to the CRTC. If and when C11 is passed, it will be an overture, not a finale. It will allow for complex negotiations with major players in the digital economy, but it will not wave any kind of magic wand to put money into the pockets of Canadian music or film or digital producers. Delaying the passage of this bill, Senator Gold has warned us, would be depriving Canadian artists of deserved earned income. But there is nothing in the text of C11 about remuneration for Canadian artists and creators and copyright holders. That is not the intent of this bill. It is, as I say, a regulatory framework. Now C11, which may be also received soon, would indeed compel Facebook and Google into binding arbitration and compel them to subsidize online news. C18. So, sorry, so what did I say? C18, pardonnez-moi. I'll say that again. Now C18, which we will be receiving soon, would indeed compel Facebook and Google into binding arbitration and compel them to subsidize online news. But there is no similar provision in C11. Again, the regulatory framework is a necessary first step, perhaps, to a new system of indexing and showcasing Canadian programs to give them more visibility online. But it is not, directly at least, a new way to pay or compensate Canadian writers, directors, composers, or performers. So perhaps, to borrow a metaphor from Senator Tannis, we can take the temperature down a bit. I stand ready to study Bill C-11 as soon as possible. I am not interested in foot dragging or lollygagging. My office has a list of possible witnesses prepared. I am eager to hear their testimony and to hear their answers to our questions. And goodness knows, given the persistent misunderstandings around this bill, we need public hearings to educate the public at large and perhaps parliamentarians too. I just don't want us to be pushed to meet an arbitrary artificial deadline. And I don't want a quick pre-study to undercut the place of proper analysis and good faith debate that this bill requires. So I'm proud tonight to stand in support of my colleague, Senator Dasko, and to ask us to give some sober second thought to this motion. Thank you very much. Merci. Hi, hi. Senator Smeville de Chen, a question? Oui, uh, oui, prendriez-vous uh, une question, Senatrice? Évidemment, avec plaisir. Bon. Alors, comme vous savez, la sénatrice Simon et moi, nous sommes dans le même comité des transports et des communications. Nous avons beaucoup discuté de ce, de ce projet de loi. On reçoit des euh, témoins ensemble, devrais-je dire plutôt des lobbyistes ensemble, pour essayer de comprendre un peu la situation. Donc, je suis tout à fait d'accord avec votre analyse à l'effet que c'est compliqué, qu'il n'y a pas deux parties, mais beaucoup de parties. Je crois toutefois que les enjeux sont très importants. Il en va sans doute en partie de la survie de la culture canadienne telle qu'on l'a connue. Oui, il faut changer, oui, il faut innover, mais on a quand même un devoir de protéger cette culture canadienne. Comment on le fait dans un environnement qui est complètement différent? Alors, en quoi le fait de commencer la semaine prochaine une préétude où on commencerait par avoir des témoins qui seraient là et nous expliqueraient le big picture avec des gens qui connaissent la technologie, en quoi cela nous empêcherait de continuer dans une étude qui n'est plus une étude préalable quand le projet de loi arriverait. Je ne vois pas en quoi ça change quoi que ce soit. On est assis dans une salle, on reçoit des témoins, on écoute les témoins, on pose des questions. En quoi c'est différent une étude préalable et une étude à ce stade-ci qui se, qui se continue l'une vers l'autre? C'est une bonne question, et même si j'avais com bien compris, je pense que c'est peut-être plus facile pour moi de répondre en anglais, si, si tu préfères. Si um, It is a very fair question. 
And I think if we were in an indifferent environment and I had confidence that the contents of the pre-study could be rolled into a study, that we could continue in one linear progression, I would have fewer concerns. I, I guess my problem is that I'm hearing from voices outside this chamber that there is an intention for us to pass this bill by the end of the month. And, and because of that, I have, I have no objection to beginning study as quickly as possible. I just want my, my concerns on the record that we must not be placed into the situation we were when there was an election or a prorogation in the winds. There is no reason for that. Senator Lavo Cam Benson. Great. Um, so are you aware that um, Bill C-92, which I sponsor, um, a couple parliaments ago, Bill C-15, just last parliament, had a robust pre-study that was rolled into the study of the bill. I think it went quite successfully, and we felt really, really good about the robustness of that study. That's the first question. Are you aware of that? And are, willi are you willing to disclose the voices that you've heard, either in your head or maybe out of this chamber? <laughs> Who is saying that there is going to be a study? Because uh, Senator Gold has actually said that, that we're not buffaloing, we're not pushing, we're not, um, we're not doing any of those things. That as uh, the GRO's office, we're actually interested in a really robust study as well. Senator Simons. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, yes, of course, I'm well aware of the excellent work that APA did on the, uh, on the Indigenous, uh, uh, with both the languages, was it both the languages bill and the, and the child welfare bill? So, I mean, clearly there is precedent for excellent pre-studies. The problem is that I'm hearing from the minister's office and from stakeholders across the board who've all been told that this bill is to be passed by the end of June. And so, you know, I, Mark, Mark just gave a shrug that my dad used to give all the time. It's a very Jewish, it's a very Jewish shrug. I know this shrug. I grew up with this shrug. I mean, I can also do the shrug, but this, you know, I, I just, as I say, I want on the record my concerns that the committee for whom I have great respect, I mean, last time the House committee had four months to do their study. So this time when they're speeding through it, perhaps that's fine because they have trod this ground before. Our committee never got this chance last year. We were chomping at the bit to go and were denied the opportunity. So, as I say, I am keen to get into this as quickly as possible. Senator Labo Cam Benson. Quickly, colleague. Um, um, do you, is the minister in this chamber? Like at the end of the day, who, who is responsible for this chamber? Is it us or is it the House of Commons? Senator Simons. I very much hope it's us. Senator Simons. I had, Avec plaisir. I had promised not to intervene because uh, I, I think a lot has been said, but uh, I want to clarify a few things. As you know, I'm the sponsor of the bill. Uh, and I can tell you, and you, you'll have to trust me after 17 years as a senator, uh, I was never asked by the government leader to pass this bill by the end of June. I was never given a timetable by the government either. And so, but I've remembered since we're going towards the first anniversary of C10, Last year, at this time, we got C10 that had been studied, like you mentioned, for three bloody for three months, <laughs> and 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 hundreds and hundreds of witnesses were heard, and it arrived here after third reading in the House of Commons, and we were ready to, to continue studying it. And I was being asked by some people in this room that I won't name that we should have a pre-study. We did not get one. I wanted one last year, and I obviously want one again this year. But I'd like to, to what happened between the last, last year and this year that some people would not want a pre-study this year. It needs to be studied. I, I know that you met with a whole bunch of people, but why don't you invite them to public meetings, and we can dialogue with them to see what their interests are, what they believe should be put in or out of the bill, or what is not being done by the other chamber, or what was not done by the other chamber last year, why not do it in a very transparent way? This is what this place is about. A little bit of seniority, I have to admit that I've been here long enough, that that's what we do. We listen, and we don't only talk to people. I'm sorry, it might offend some senators here. We do listen to people. 
That is part of our function, is to have people come to our committees, stakeholders, and listen to us. What happened between last year and this year that we don't want to listen to these people in public in a very organized fashion versus having people come to our offices asking us to, or, or voices telling us that we're told. I, I, I'm telling you again, never, there never. There is a question, Senator, and it's not to you because I know I'd have a long answer. But uh, the, the question, what happened between last year and this year that we do not want to listen to people talk about a very important subject? Simons, I'm sorry, before you answer, uh, your time has expired. Are you asking for five minutes to respond? Uh, is leave granted to answer the question? Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Senator Simons. In fairness, Senator Dawson, I opposed a pre-study last year, too, uh, for, for very much the same reasons. I think we just have to be practical here. As I say, I'm not taking this position philosophically. It's not because of years of parliamentary precedent. It's not because of partisan reasons. The, the bill is going to be studied in committee six times this week in the House of Commons. They could be in clause by clause by next week, and we could have the bill very shortly. I just don't know that there's much point in starting up the mechanism of a pre-study when if we waited 48 hours, we might be able to start a study in earnest. 